time for the bell How many options will you sell? Fire up your platform, get ready to enter But first, let's get the mindset centered Hey, hey, let's go We're not here to gamble, we're here to trade We follow the plan, that's how we get paid Testing, trading, have success Find what works for you and forget the rest Stats and probabilities is what we're about Time to dismiss greed and doubt Focus on the process, not the money And the profits will flow like honey Power our lives, let's start the show Come on trade hackers, get ready to go Zero day options, time to make bank Get locked and loaded, then be ready to plank Hey. What's up everyone, welcome to Power Hour Live September 7th. Hope everybody's having a good day. Uh, Book day uh, profit on the DKS this morning. At first profit target, stopped out on the rest for a profit, but still a nice little winner. We've got a quiet lunch on that's doing a OK. Took off half at 40%. Got the last piece to come off at 80%, which it's currently trading at 580 and my profit target's at 390. So need a couple more bucks to come out. That's what we're here for, Ken. Power hour is the dessert. So for power hour, we are looking at a raggedy old straddle again, my friends, raggedy old straddle. I'll buy some longs here. In preparation for tranche one. Right now, it looks like the 4450. Give it a couple minutes. Yeah, so obviously, we had that big gap down, and it's just been kind of pushing and pulling back, pushing and pulling back all day, bounced up against the upside expected move a couple times, pulled back. Now we got another little bounce coming. But the, uh, the NASDAQ, well, the NASDAQ has bounced a little bit now, but the Russell's staying weak. Russell's still down over 1%. NASDAQ was staying weak there. A while still weaker than s p obviously but catching a little bounce here all right so tranche one Just about that time. It's like the 44, ooh, no, yeah, 4450. 4450 straddle. I was looking at the inverted strikes for a minute. I was like, wait a minute. But my mind was playing tricks on me. Yeah, the short squeeze would be up, if SPX was up a half percent from its open, it's only up 0.39% here. So I'm just doing one to one.
4450 straddle. Here we come. Tranche one straddle. Trying to get filled at 740. Filled at 740. And we are in for tranche one. Had high hopes at the beginning of the day for a strangle for tranche one, but this bounce just sucked it right out. VIX is only up less than 2% now. Peaked its head up to, let's see, the high of VIX today was 1569. Now it's at 1471. I was trying to, I was scoping out some VXX verticals and it, when it was pushing up, I had a uh, had one modeled out, but I was just going to see if it was going to push any bit more, if stocks were going to continue at all. But got this big bounce, taking it all away. I did add a new short strangle in oil whenever implied volatility was a little bit higher. Look at that. It's already come in $99. The uh, short calls on one of our MES strangles is getting close to 50%, but not quite there. So I'm holding off on that. It's pretty well centered. Our duck and QQQ is about back to where we bought about about back to where we entered it. Got a time fly in SPX that's up two or two or 3%. If we get a down move into tomorrow, we would definitely be, should be hitting some profits on that one. I do have four dollar stop, Raj. You can check that out on me on the uh, trade plan sheet. It's always there as well in the trade plan channel. Getting a little push out of SPX. All right, how's everybody else's trading today? Do you guys book a couple winners on the DKS and Quiet Lunch so far? Anything else? I saw Meech had a uh, AM ratio going. Mine did not set up. The big gap down for a Thursday. But as far as Thursdays go, it's been solid. I didn't have any, I didn't do any grocery shopping, but I did take the opportunity for a quiet day to get away from the screens and go hang out at my pool for an hour just before I showed up for power hour. That was my, my first uh, encounter at the office pool. Not too shabby. 
took some hot bone broth out there with me. Great afternoon. <laughs> Dick K AM ratio win, DKS win. PM did a few, all looking good. No power hour except for Trunch 2. Gotcha. Nice. Yeah, Murph Dog, I got a uh, few months ago, I got a, I bought a condo for as my office. So it's, uh, it's nice. It's got, a, I got, a, I got my own gym. I got my own kitchen. I got my own pool. Just been a little under the weather the last couple of days. So I was like, I'm going to go get myself a little vitamin D and just relax by the pool with some bone broth. See if hopefully SPX isn't trying to break through that uh, upper expected move. Tested it a couple times. Heading back up towards there a third. Ah, so that's where she's doing the cold plunge. I wish, yeah, that'd be cool if we had a cold plunge that I didn't have to operate myself. Yeah, this, if anyone's in the uh, situation where it would make sense to have a separate office, I highly recommend just getting a condo. I had been renting and I just, you know, they kept jacking the rent up more and more. And finally I was like, you know what? I could buy a decent condo and have a lot of different amenities and own it for less than what I'm paying in rent. So that's what I did. And I would highly recommend it. I used to just work from home, but with animals and kids and Amazon showing up with my wife's package every 10 minutes. Just too many distractions. Had to get out of the house. Yeah, London is probably not the most affordable place to do that, right? Yeah, fortunately, KC's not too bad. And I searched, I searched for a good, well, I had Zillow notifications coming for about the last year. So six to nine months before I pulled the trigger, I had a pretty good feel on the condo market. I found a nice one. Two bedroom, two bath. Lando comes in sometimes. He's got his own office. <coughs> Come on down. All right, getting a little pullback. Still got 10 plus minutes before tranche two. Come on over, the more the merrier.
one of my one of the bedrooms is Landon's office. I have my main station out kind of in the living room. And I've got another room that I use as kind of a thinking meditation idea room. I've got a four by four foot by six foot huge glass whiteboard on the wall. Got a little bed in there, a little day bed. That's where I go to reset. I am in the 4450 straddle, yep. And we're right back to center, boys and girls. A little decay coming in so far. So let's see, I got in at 740. So I'm looking for 445. To reduce my stop on tranche one. Tranche one charted. All right, so I need 445. It's currently trading at 660. So I've got a little ways. Uh, Murph Dog. Let's see. Yeah, so I don't base it off of a necessarily a percentage of my account. So I'm not I'm not changing my position size every time my my account moves. As you'll see in my trade plan, I simply set my position size at the beginning of the month. And that's a, and that's what I do day in day out on each particular strategy for the entire month. And so when I'm setting those position sizes, you know, I do, I do take into account which of these positions might overlap as far as meaning I might have a position or part of the position on, uh, in conjunction with, you know, the next one I put on. So I, I, I determine, you know, what kind of situations those I, I, that I would have. So in other words, I want to know what's my max exposure at any one time. And then, um, and so that's, that's how I position size. I just, I just, um, so yeah, I look at, you know, what I, I go through the trade logs. I figure my max risk based on the, the stop that I, that I use on that strategy, I go through the trade logs, try to feel that, and then just set my position size on, on what I'm comfortable with. And then each month I decide, um, what that position size size is going to be for the next month. Um, so you know, I might increase it, I might decrease it, you know, whatever I whatever I decide to do at that point. But it's it's not necessarily based on a percentage of my account. So hopefully that helps. And if I I think if I had a an account where I was only doing zero DTE, for example. Uh, I might do it differently. You know, I'm, I may, I may just, you know, I think kind of like Tim Weiss does, he kind of compounds based on current account value. 
but I'm trading a lot of different strategies out of the same account. So it doesn't really make sense for me to do that. Got SPX coming down. Uh, yeah, can I guess? I mean, kind of to some degree, but it, it's more of just a comfort level on a dollar amount, you know, feeling, you know, okay, if I take this loss, if all of these, you know, hit their stops and what, what's, what's that loss? I, I, I just think about it more in a dollar amount. And then, of course, as my account grows, I'll, you know, continue to feel more comfortable. But I also withdraw money out of the account. So, you know, just uh, it's not always based on a percentage. It's more of a comfort in that dollar amount of risk. All right, five minutes until tranche two. Looks like the 44 could be the 4450 again. Give it another minute. Look for the closest thing to three bucks on each side for tranche two. Looks like the 4450 straddle. Give it just another minute. Couple of decent little five minute bars there, down and back up. <coughs> All right, forty four fifty straddle. Try to get filled at six twenty. Filled at 620, 4450 straddle.
All right, so load it up at 4450. So I'm scaling down to a three point stop at 445 on tranche one. And then for tranche two, I got it at 620. So 370 is what I'm looking for to scale down my trunch to stop. Quiet lunch. My target is at 390 and it's trading at 420. So just a little bit more decay and the rest of that quiet lunch will come off at 80%. Need a little, little pause or a two point drop, but it should hit it. Fifteen. Down to four bucks. Trader Bianca hit her eighty percent. About 15 cents away. There it is, 390. So out of my quiet lunch. Nice. That's a nice trade. All right, very nice, very nice. All right, Power Hour, it's up to you. Let's bring it home. Tell you what, yesterday was a good challenging test to sticking with the plan, wasn't it? Power hour I'm talking about after a brutal morning, you know, where I lost on an AM ratio, I lost on a DKS, I lost on a, a duck. So I was down pretty good. And that's, that's on the back of having a really good day the day before. So giving it almost all back the next day and then coming into power hour when the premiums were tiny, right? Some of the lowest premiums we've seen, you know, and I, you know, I don't know about you guys, but I was thinking, Oh my gosh, if, if I get stopped out on all three of these tranches and power hour, that is, I'm going to get not only give back everything I did the day before, 
but I'm going to, you know, take a huge loss. But I did it, followed the plan. And what did Power Hour do? Gave us three nice winners. Got me back almost everything from the morning. Uh, JSP didn't trigger because, at least on mine, Dick K, because I have a filter that it's got to move up above the open by a tick, 0.05%. That was a filter that Dan B came up with. Filtered out a lot of losses. Took less trades, but filtered out a lot, quite a few losses. And basically, yesterday was a perfect example where it opens up and just continues lower. I didn't, I didn't take that one because I, because it never, never gave me a bounce to enter. So that saved me on that one. Were you flying and trading, Dick? I think he said you got you're on your way to the airport after you entered some morning. Yeah, yesterday I meant. So you post a few things that you're getting into it, but you're on your way to the airport. All right, getting ready for tranche three. So it looks like we got a 55-50 strangle. <coughs> uh, the DKS and Option Omega showed a, a win, but I got stopped out at 200%. It's like a 45, 55, 45, 50. 200 percent of credit received. Yep, exactly. Another minute for tranche three. I would it's just, I would assume maybe just slightly different strikes or whatever. I mean it bounced <clears throat> pretty close after I got stopped out, so just be a slight variation i you know i could have got in a couple minutes early whereas you know i got in right at 10 25 i'm not sure i didn't i didn't look that closely <clears throat> thank you elliot for sticking up for me Kelvin's calling me names. All right, forty five, forty four, fifty five, forty four, fifty. Tranche three. I get filled at three, 
25. Three twenty-five. It is. Tront one and two are down to five eighty. I need four forty-five for Tront one. All right, so forty-four fifty is the number. All right, forty four fifty it is. <clears throat> We only had about a 10 point range going back to midday. Let's just go ahead and stay right in this range. We don't need any breakouts. anybody is new here, we are locked and loaded with all three of our tranches. So we've got some downtime. So if anyone has questions or needs us to fill in the gaps on anything, feel free to post.
Andrew K. Hey, everyone. For zero DTE, I'm only trading AM short. I see Rick, PH. What other strategies would you add to diversify? I'll tell you what, the quiet lunches and the PM iron condors have been really solid lately. And DKS, yeah. I've only had one losing DKS so far in about the last month. <clears throat> Think about like the quiet lunch and the PM iron condors, they only, you know, they only set up sometimes. So it's not like you're, you're adding a new daily strategy by any means, but they've, uh, they've been good. And then the ducks and the, uh, JSPs, those will, those will basically have the same setup criteria. So I've been doing both, but you could choose either one or the other on those too. All right, creeping back up a little bit. Back up. Keeps wanting to sniff that expected move area about the Crunch one and two, trading down to 555. I'm looking for 445 to reduce stop one, stop on tranche one.
All right, sorry, my friends. I'm just uh, clicking around on some other stuff while we wait. But we're right back down to the 4550. Oh, 490, 485, getting close on my tranche one. Change that to 745. If we get there, got to see price get down to 445, and then I'll change my stop to 745 from four to three. Currently trading at 470. Four sixty-five. Uh, as far as the ducks go, Morrow, I don't, I don't really even use the analysis tool on the zero DTE ducks. Really, I'm just looking for a minimum premium of five seventy five. That'll, that way you know you're you're getting at least a seventy five dollar credit to the upside per contract. Yep, no, that's exactly right. And that's why, because the the call, the width of the call spread is $5. So anything above $5 gives you profit to the upside. So that's what I was saying. I got a minimum, minimum premium of $5.75. So I know that at least $75 per contract is what I'm getting to the upside. Yep, we're always doing the 60 delta on the call side and then five, uh, a, a fixed strike offset of just one strike, five points on the call side. And then the put side can be sometimes 10 points away or 15, I've done them 10 or 10 and 15 points away. And then the, uh, you know, the the difference in your, puts is just whatever you whatever you have set at all right down to 460 i'm looking for four four or 455 looking for 445 i saw 445 all right changing my stop to 745 Now I'm looking for 370 to adjust my tranche two stop. All right. Power hours being a good little boy so far. No, I'm still I'm still coughing up all kinds of stuff. I thought I had COVID. I was pretty sure I had COVID. My body was aching, a little bit of a fever. 
respiratory issues, but I took a test and I was, I was not, I was COVID free. What do you mean, Morrow? I love wearing a mask. <laughs> well, with this new variant, it's actually, uh, you can get it through your speakers. So if I'm talking, it actually travels through the microphone and so you have to wear a mask while you're trading power hour. Yeah, it's a new, uh, really highly, highly contagious version. <laughs> Get the trade hackers fired up. Trust me, no one's more fired up about that than myself. I try not to think about it. My blood starts boiling. Oh, it did some nasty things to some people, no doubt about that. I'm not trying to be insensitive about that, but there's a lot of ridiculousness going on, as we all know. In Maryland? Is that MD? Jeez. Oh, yeah, I, I heard with I heard uh rumors of they were gonna try to start doing some mask mandates again. I was like, uh, you gotta be kidding me. I don't think it'll go over as easy as it did this time around. SPX up to 4453. Tronto 2 is at 550. I needed to come down to 370 to reduce my stop. <laughs> hey, Adam Roth, you got to wear a mask. Don't, uh, I wouldn't, if you, if you need to wear a mask. I don't think I'd really care what anybody else had to say. I was looking at it more from the other perspective, being shamed for not wearing a mask. All right, peeking our heads back up to the expected move for the day, the 44.55 level. Tranche one now with its reduced stop is at <clears throat> 745. That spread's currently trading at 665. Gonna need a little pullback with uh, a little less than 15 minutes to, minutes to go.
pull back, pull back. Let's pull back a few times from here today. Just need one more. One more little one. All right, SPX, time to simmer down. <clears throat> simmer back down under your 4450 level. Go, little buddy. Just a little more. All right, popping back up. Stop on Tron Twins at 7.45. Currently trading at A little over 10 minutes until the bell. How about a nice five minutes and five points lower? <clears throat> One point per minute. Oh boy, wrong way. Stopped on tranche one at 8.05, so that's a 50, 60 point slippage, 60 cents. Tranche two stops at uh, 9.20, spreads currently trading at eight bucks. Had to get us out of tranche one. Now it's going to come back down.
Just had to poke its head up for a new high, high of day. Didn't like the feeling of that, so it's coming back down. Still hanging around forty four fifty five. So it sounds like, yeah, I was going to ask you trailing stop. Yeah. <clears throat> All right. Well, the trail, the fixed stop saved me again on tranche two so far. Tranche one, uh, tranche two back down to 550. I'm looking for 370 to reduce my stop. <clears throat> Gets down to 370, I'd put my stop at 570. That's a beautiful candle. I believe they refer to that as the spinning doji hammer. Am I right? All right, down to four bucks. Need just a little bit more. 375. There's 370. All right, changing my stop to 570 on tranche two. Oh, it's almost time to exit. I got a minute to bail. All right. Still some juice left in those options. They are straddles. Well, no, tranche, tranche three is not a straddle. So on my discretionary basis for my trade plan, I can, if I have a strangle, I can decide to hold it. So for tranche three, I'm going to just, I'm not going to adjust my thing yet. We'll see how we move here in the next minute. <clears throat> tranche two, I need to get out of. About 4.30. Fill at 4.30 to close tranche two. So I've got tranche three left. Oh boy. I don't want to move lower. All right, I'm going to try to get out at a buck 40. And should be hitting. Filled at a buck 40 to close tranche three. So stopped on tranche one. 
Let's see. Got into tranche one at 740. Stopped at 805. <clears throat> so 65 cent loser on tranche one. Tranche two in at 620 out at 430. So a couple dollar winner. And then tranche three in at 325 out at a buck 40. So two out of three winners and the loser was a small loser. So I will take it, my friends. I will take it. All right. So tomorrow I'll be streaming in the morning at the open as well as for power hour. Should have a little more to do hopefully tomorrow than we did this morning. All right, my friends, have a good rest of your night. Chat with you soon.